Welcome to Kellis Coder and today we will be beating this kit in pole position. Motherfucker! So the movie Daryl was released in 1985. This 16 million dollar movie was a tremendous flop at the box office, only bringing in 8 million dollars. The star Barrett Oliver, who got his fame in the previous year with the smash hit The Never Ending Story, didn't turn out to be enough to bring in the punters. Although his performances are exceptional, I have to say. And luckily the movie did go on to become a cult classic. And I consider it one of my childhood favorites. So Daryl is a special kid who is raised by foster parents. During the movie the foster parents and us as viewers slowly realize that Daryl is not who he says he is. And the first time that we see that Daryl is something special is in the so-called pole position sequence. He struck out stupid. 45,100, okay let's see your best score. Daryl, what the f what did I do now? I just walked in the door for Christ's sake. That's not 45,100. Oh. Just. Just let Daryl try. Thank you for the demo, Daryl. You're welcome. Such a polite kid. Hang on, hang on, hang on, kiddo. 79,950? That is impossible. Les Lachey claims to have set the high score back in 1984, which was 67,310. What are you pulling here, Daryl? Shame on you. Are you Billy Mitchell, Todd Rogers? You can never trust Hollywood. Unbelievable. Now I do wonder how they pulled this off. Any suggestions? If I only knew a guy first in special effects, visual effects and computer programming. Huh. Oh, hey. Let's ask Ray. That's so cool of you Ray that you thought about me. Yeah, I am the foremost expert on special effects and visual effects. I did four TV shows, two movies and a handful of commercials. So, but I do know how to pull this off in camera. It is something called priming the score. What the f is priming the score? I'm glad you asked. Um, priming the score is basically not starting with the score at zero, but an arbitrary number that allows you to achieve the highest score no matter how shit you are playing. And let's investigate whether that is possible with pole position. Which it is, otherwise there wouldn't be a video. So let's jump in. I started by racing to 1250 and looking in memory using the emulator for 1250 or 5012. Now I'm racing to 1350 to see if the addresses that I've identified are indeed correct. Back in the 80s we had system monitors on cartridges that allowed us to do so, so it's a valid process. I see that the values match on these addresses, so we have the valid addresses. I know these addresses down. Now I will take the ROM file and disassemble it using an online disassembler. There are many of these online disassemblers these days. I use them a lot. That way you don't need to install extra software, etc. The disassembler has no knowledge about the base address of the code, so we need to inform it, and this is an educated guess. Since this is a ROM, and ROMs on Ataris usually start at 8000, I disassemble from 8000. I also saw a lot of jumps in the 8000 range, making pretty sure that this was correct. 
We need this in order to set breakpoints on the right addresses. Now I copy the disassembled code into VI so I can easily search for those three addresses that hold the score. Here the three addresses that make up the score are located right next to each other and initialized. That makes life a whole lot easier. And it's set to zero, but I don't know what this variable contains. Well, it contains zero, but I don't know what it does. So if I'm going to change 00 to 06 in runtime, we just see whether this breaks or that it works. And I think it will work. Usually addresses are overwritten again. Ideally, you would want to insert a specific LDA6 below there, but there is a problem that all the addresses for the variables and jumps are then off by two bytes. And you would need to go in manually to fix those, and that is a hell of a job, and we want to avoid that. So the load command is located on 85E6. I will put a breakpoint on 85E6, so when it hits there, we can step over one instruction and change the register at runtime and see if that works. There we go, we got something here. Now we have confirmed that if we change 00 to 06, we start off with a nice high score. And now we need to reflect that into code by changing the LDA00 to LDA06. I will make a copy of the ROM so we can safely edit the code in there. We are going to use a run of the mail hex editor to change the code. Any hex editor will do as long as you have search and edit functionality. Let's find this byte string that's rather unique with that. The reason I'm not just looking for A900 is that this instruction could happen all over the place. I want the search to be as unique as possible, so I'm pretty sure that I've identified the right A900 to change. Okay, let's change this. To 06, save it. Now I load the new Daryl ROM, the one that we hacked, and see if it's working. Let's start the game, and there we go. We're already damn close to Daryl's record. All we now have to do is play a mediocre game and win. Let's put this on a ROM and play it on real hardware like they did in the movie. So I ordered some pre-designed PCBs from PCB. Sorry, Wait. Ray, that's my line. So the first step is to get a PCB from, well, you know who, because as we all know, PCB stands for pole position cartridge board, doesn't it? Wow, our first celebrity on Kellis Coder. Thank you, Perifractic. I seriously lost my train of thought now. So I'm soldering the sockets for a NAND gate and for the 27512 in my case a little decoupling capacitor, and that is it. I clean off the flux, and I have a nice clean board from PCBWay. And after a week, also the ROMs arrived. Yay! Now that we finally have some of the ROMs, we can create the EEPROMs. What I'm going to do is use these. These are actually flash ROMs. They're compatible with the old improms they're a little bit bigger but yeah these days these aren't expensive like two dollars a piece since i'm using a 64k rom instead of a 16k i need to offset to c000 now omni pro command line tool on linux doesn't support this yet so i figured i just concatenate it four times to the same file and that way one of them automatically starts at C000. So now I can burn it, verify it, and we're done. Pushing it onto my PCB, and now let's put it in the Atari. Be sure that your chips are facing to the rear of the computer, not the keyboard. That's a bit confusing. And there we go, we got pole position running. Now let's beat down. Eat my dust, kiddo.
So there you have it, we shattered Daryl's high score. But Daryl is to be forgiven. His brain is probably a Z80 processor and mine is a 6502. And everybody knows that the 6502 is the more superior processor. So, And the reason why I think that the production created a special ROM is because you see a special mention to Atari and Namco. And you see this screen that Cheryl pulls up. Now this could be from the arcade version of Pole Position, I don't know that version to be honest, but it's not on this ROM. And it's logical because it is a ROM, there is no memory in there, there is no battery in there, so no way to store the high scores, there are no disk routines on there, so yeah that is impossible. So I'm pretty sure that this is how the production done it. For the next one I will be beating Todd Rogers' 5.51 on Dragster, and we're also going to do that on real hardware. So see you in the next one.